Tony Tone Show, Vintage Sound, 93.1 FM, out of the Pearl City, Muscatine, Iowa. It's an exciting time of the year when football is back, especially when your Iowa Hawkeyes are off to a great start. Oh my goodness, last Saturday's game, they absolutely uh, stomped North Texas. I almost felt bad for North Texas, (laughs) like, oh, it's going to be a long ride home. The voice of the Iowa Hawkeyes joins me uh, right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gary Dolphin. Gary, how you doing, buddy? Hi, Tony. Good morning. Uh, just a pretty good rain shower up here in Dubuque, but uh, you know what? The rains have been timely, and uh, Iowa's playing good football, so I've, I've got no complaints, man. Oh, my goodness. So that North Texas game, Gary, I'm listening on the radio, and all of a sudden it's 62 to whatever. What was it? 62 to 16 was the final, right? Yes, it was 62-16, oh. and it was uh, you know pretty balanced down in terms of points uh, in quarters, uh, Iowa. Tried some trick plays, which uh, put him in deep holes, as you know, the, the fumbled pitch by Derek Mitchell, whose first trip to the field, that was uh, that was an interesting call, but uh, the defense has been playing so consistent. And then they got the big turnovers in the second half that really flipped it in terms of, uh, of a solid win to really a, a runaway, and Drew Ott made a big play again, knocking the pass away from Andrew McNulty as he was cocking to throw, and then obviously they got a couple of interceptions, and... and uh, you know, turn those into scores. Uh, so it was a good day all the way around. Special teams were, were very solid again. And uh, the, the offense, I mean, what can you say about C.J. Beathard? He's been really good, and, and hopefully if they keep this guy healthy all year long, uh, they can they can do some special things with that offense. I tell you what, it was, uh, it was one of those games, Gary, where you have the momentum and then you build the lead, and then you get to see some guys, some young guys, and, boy, did they play a lot. I mean, it seemed like the whole the whole roster was on the field at some point, um, including Mark- yeah, and, and and it should be. I mean, yeah. uh, it, you're, you're not going to rub a guy like Dan McCarney's nose in it. Mm-hmm. He's such a good guy and a good mm-hmm. person, and obviously loves Iowa. Grew up in Iowa City, and, and, and Dan is a quality individual. And I, and I really feel uh, with McNulty at quarterback, uh, you know, they and they ran the ball better than I thought they could against this Iowa defense. Uh, better than really anybody else has run the football uh, this season. And uh, they had those first two drives there in the second half where they were moving the football and uh, then got to midfield at one point, and that's when I knocked the ball away. Uh, Iowa recovered the fumble, took it in, and scored it. And the momentum really shifted in Iowa's favor. But it, as I said on the postgame show, I think this is a North Texas team, given the quality of the coaching staff, that mm-hmm. can go on to have a good year in, in Conference USA. I mean, they played... Uh, Two high-scoring teams in Rice and SMU, and now and now the Hawkeyes, and uh, and and they all zero and three to show for it. But I think this tough schedule at the start of the year is going to prepare them for Conference USA. So I I, I wouldn't be uh, fooled by that 62-16 score. Iowa got some breaks, but at the same time, made their own breaks too, and and that really helps. That's what a good football team does. They take advantage. Not only do they get turnovers, but they take advantage of them right. and turn them into scores. And that's what the Hawks have been doing this Saturday. Big Ten play opens, Gary. You guys will be in Badger country, which I know can sometimes be a little bit of a hostile environment, right? Yeah, but, I, you know, that's fine. I mean, I, Kinnick Stadium can be hostile, too. But I think in the end, <laughs> uh, Camp Randall probably parties a little bit more than, than your average uh, Big Ten stadium. But uh, <laughs> it's a great atmosphere. It's uh, one of those, uh, kind of like Kinnick, it's one of those 1920, 1930 built stadiums. It's got a lot of character to it, right right in the middle of a residential section. And I'm looking forward to it. I, I think it's going to be a good game. I think it's a game Iowa can win. Uh, it, it's it's a different Wisconsin team. There's no Melvin Gordon, and they lost their, Corey, uh, their best running back in Corey Clement uh, for at least uh, a month or so with a, with a hernia injury. But now that, that said, you and I both know uh, the, the history of uh, great backs at Wisconsin that started when uh, Barry Alvarez got there, uh, right. beginning with Ron Dane and, and right on down through present day. So they, they've got two freshmen they are playing uh, uh, right now a lot, and, and they're, they're the next in line. And, and so there, there's no question as to what Wisconsin wants to do or what the Badgers are going to do. They're going to try and run the football. They ran a lot of uh, interesting uh, formation I'm not familiar with. They ran a lot of... Uh, Three backs, an inverted wishbone, and three backs, and one tight end. Wow! In their that, that was their power package against uh, Hawaii on Saturday night. I haven't looked at all the tape, but they ran uh, three backs, two tight ends, three backs, one tight end, one wide receiver. So they they, they are going to try 
kind of like Iowa, Tony. They're not going to try and fool you as to what they do. Right. Now, I, I would take C.J. Beathard over Joel Stave uh, in a heartbeat at quarterback. I mm-hmm. think he's a difference maker. Although Joel Stave is a very solid, you know, uh, don't make a mistake, kind of like Jake Rudock type quarterback. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's I think that's where the difference is going to come down to that and the fact Iowa's run defense is top five in the Big Ten, uh, top ten, top 15 nationally. Uh, can Iowa's run defense uh, give a good enough effort to nullify Wisconsin's uh, daunting run game? And uh, to me, that that's the key. That and the quarterbacking, whoever makes the more plays in the quarterbacking position, I think wins the game. It's an exciting time if you're just tuning in. Gary Dolphin on the MPW Digital TV Celebrity Hotline. Big Ten play opens Saturday <clears throat> for the Hawkeyes taking on Wisconsin. The Hawks are undefeated. Wisconsin's 3-1. and one. Gary, uh, Jeff on Facebook wanted me to ask you, what are some of the keys to the Hawkeyes continuing to be successful in the Big Ten play, which kicks off again on Saturday? You saw a little bit of it on, uh, on uh, Saturday. Well, actually, Iowa State. Uh, and Saturday win the turnover battle. I mean, when you get in Big Ten play, uh, you're, you're not going to kid anybody because everybody knows what you do. I mean, for crying out loud, uh, you know, we play Nebraska and Minnesota and Wisconsin, and next year Michigan comes back on the schedule. Everybody pretty well knows what you do, so you're not going to fool anybody. I mean, you may throw a trick play in or two, but uh, that said, you got to be able to run the football uh, in, in the Big Ten because November will be here before you know it. What happens when it gets cold? You're not going to throw that many passes. You're not going to be pass happy. You're going to run the football either uh, with the spread option or with the zone read as Iowa does. And then you got to take care of the football. And so to me, going forward in this conference, and, and by the way, that Western division is, is really up for grabs. Uh, we're seeing uh, Nebraska's good, Wisconsin's good, Minnesota's got a terrific defense. Uh, Iowa's good. It seems to be that to me that Iowa's probably the best balanced of the favorites. Northwestern has its best defense since Pat Fitzgerald's been there, which is kind of ironic to say that given all the great offenses that Northwestern's had. Right. So when you look at that Western division, it is really uh, wide open, and so I think it's going to be a great race. So when you do that, when you when you when you have that as a crystal ball, then you get back to what the basics are, and that's what wins football games, and that is running the football. Take an occasional shot downfield, which C.J. Beathard will do. He can also beat you with his legs. And then take care of the football. And that's why I think with this guy at quarterback, uh, this could be a special season for the Hawkeyes, Tony. It seems like that. Uh, Gary, you know you know Kirk uh, better than a lot of us do. You see him all the time. What's different between uh, Kirk a year a year ago and, and Kirk as we head into this Wisconsin game? He seems, from, a, from an outsider's perspective, and not to say that he wasn't um, he wasn't all in last season, but he definitely seems like the fire is, is burning hot. You know what I mean? Is that, is that a fair thing to say? Yeah, it's absolutely fair to say. I think, uh, excuse me, you know, he's, uh, he's been there se- going on 17 years now, and we all get set in our ways. And I think he uh, realized the way the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the year uh, didn't crash and burn, certainly, but it, it ended uh, with a, a fizzle versus a sizzle, as I like to say, with uh, the Nebraska game giving up the big lead in the fourth quarter and losing that game and then getting pounded pretty good by Tennessee in, in the bowl game. Uh, you know, up until that point, they're sitting there at 7-3 and three, uh, with a chance to win the division. That's what I try and remind people. You know, all they look at is 7-6. and six. So Don't forget where, what position Iowa was in right. with Wisconsin and Nebraska coming to town back-to-back. I mean, they had, they had a chance to win it outright. Wisconsin won a great game at, by two points, and then Obviously, the special teams, boo-boos, uh, in the fourth quarter cost them the Nebraska game. So I think after that uh, part of the season, they reevaluated everything and decided, uh, you know what, uh, we're, we're going to open things up. We're going to take a few more chances. Uh, I have no doubt that uh, son, uh, son Brian Ferris got in Kirk's head a little bit and said, come on, Dad, we've got to try some new things. <laughs> right. uh, and, then, and, then, and then the other component was, uh, quite frankly, uh, Tony, uh, Stay healthy. I mean, they 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 were running Mark Weissman, a 240-pound fullback at tailback, and that's tough to do in the Big Ten. I mean, in terms of scoring points, Mark could always get to the edge, and God bless him. I hate to think where Iowa would have been without Mark Weissman. Right. But uh, they they had to play him at tailback a lot. Now you look and see what uh, Jordan, a healthy Jordan Kanziri, and a healthy uh, Lashawn Daniels, although he's not 100 percent right now, can mean to this offense with C.J. Beth, Beathard at quarterback. So. Those three changes, Beathard, uh, Kanziri, and Daniels, 
I think it made a world of difference. But uh, Kirk has opened up a little bit, and uh, you know, he also he says ultimately you're joined by uh, you're uh, judged by wins and losses. I mean, he understands. The other component that people forget about is he's been out fundraising uh, for a sixty million dollar state of the art football facility that will carry Iowa into the next two generations of solid football recruiting classes. And so perhaps he took his eye off the X's and O's ball uh, a little bit uh, during that period and, and maybe trusted some people more than he should have. But he's back on page one with everybody right now. You can see that through four games. Absolutely. If we back up two weeks, Brett Greenwood makes his return to Iowa City in a moment, Gary, that uh, brought, well, tears to the eyes of a lot of Hawkeye fans, myself included, for you and Eddie in the booth. I mean, you captured it so well. Describe the atmosphere in Kinnick when he starts to, to walk across the field. Yeah, it was uh, it was unlike anything uh, we've ever witnessed. Uh, I know I got choked up on a couple of occasions, and, uh, not not unlike the week previous at Iowa State uh, when uh, Tyler Sash uh, they had a, a moment of silence for Tyler Sash. Ironically, those two guys were, were all Big Ten performers together on the same field, and that's what that's what struck me the most. But when Tyler, uh, excuse me, when uh, Brett. I uh, was introduced, and, and what was really uh, an additional choking moment was to see Pat Anger, of all people, Pat Anger and Chris Doyle uh, helping Brett out onto the field with that walker. And he would have got out there on his own. It might have taken him a little bit longer, but you could see the determination in his face. And sometimes, you know, we get too wrapped up in uh, wins and losses and who's playing and who isn't and, you know, what's wrong with Iowa and all this. And then you see a moment like Brett Greenwood struggling just to continue his life uh, in a small fashion, uh, it really struck home. And, and I can guarantee you that that swarm had a little extra charge to it uh, that night. And, and I think uh, Brett, Tyler Sash, and his spirit, and, and a lot of other components were what brought the Hawkeyes through against a good Pittsburgh team. It was so encouraging to see because Doyle, as we know, is so intense um, to see him encouraging Brett to keep going was such a nice thing. Uh, Gary, before I let you go, I just had uh, another question off Facebook that I wanted to, to pass along to you, if I could do that. Is that cool? Sure, you bet. So, Absolutely. So Eric Brinks used to work here at the radio station in Muscatine, and he says, does Gary remember coming to Muscatine during uh, his first year as the voice of the Hawks in 1997? He did color commentary for part of the homecoming game. He says, I, re- I remember it well. It was uh, the game that put the Muskies 5-1 and one on the season, clinching their first winning season in 35 years. <laughs> I did that. Uh, I do remember that like it was yesterday. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things I don't remember, mm-hmm. but you do remember your first year as Voice of the Hawkeyes as a kid growing up in Iowa, now living the dream, uh, not unlike the next kid, uh, hopefully from Iowa, that, that takes over for me in a few years. But I remember that uh, I came down to uh, to uh, record some promos for, for your station, some Hawkeye promos, and then Eric and, and, and we uh, got involved with the broadcast, and of course, I and, and, and part of the reason is I reminded folks on the air that night was, hey, look, I I did uh, high school uh, football in Dubuque for 25 years, following Hempstead and Waller Senior around it, and many of those games uh, to Muscatine and Burlington in the days of the old Mississippi Eight conference. So it was kind of like a homecoming for me. Plus, uh, a dear friend of mine who's a uh, an English teacher at Muscatine High School, Mary Getkin. Uh, who was an All-State basketball player at Dubuque Senior. Mary's still teaching down there, and she's just a sweetheart of a gal. And I uh, got caught up with her, and I see her every now and then. And so it was, uh, plus, uh, here's another reason that folks in your radio audience will remember, Tony, is uh, mm-hmm. one of my one of my early mentors when I first started doing Iowa, covering Iowa back in the 70s, was uh, Blaine Calkins from old KWPC. Right. Uh, I used to... I used to, of course, soak up uh, uh, comments and listen to all these play-by-plays of Blaine and Zobel and Brooks and Gonder and Frosty and Gene Clawson. I mean, I can rattle off four or five Hall of Famers just like that. And so Muscatine is uh, like Dubuque, one of those great old radio towns uh, that I always enjoy coming to. But I I absolutely remember that. Now, I didn't remember Muscatine getting off to a 5-1 and one start, <laughs> but obviously I had something to do with that, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, we had a... Uh... We had a tough loss this past Friday with Cedar Rapids, Washington, but there was a great moment in a play that's uh, going viral a little bit with Brian Musell's son, uh, Jake, who is an offensive lineman that received a, a sort of a flea flicker and then ended up throwing a, just an absolute bomb of a pass. So I got to uh, I got to give Brian your regards. I know you guys have known each other for a long time. 
Oh, yeah. In fact, I heard about that play through uh, your station and a couple friends in Muscatine, and uh, I've not had a chance to... Uh, to dial it up yet uh, on the internet. Uh, uh, I'm a little preoccupied this time of year, but <laughs> I, uh, I made a note of that simply because uh, the Musell family has got some Dubuque roots, some Dubuque ties. And, you know, I'm always interested in how Dubuque natives and how Iowa kids are doing, so good for him. Well, listen, I'll send you a link in your email, and you can check it out. And uh, I just want to say thanks for taking the time. It's a big week for you guys going to Wisconsin as we open Big Ten play. And, and I agree with you. I think that this Hawkeye football team, Gary, has, has a lot in store, and we're just starting to scratch the surface. Uh, it's going to be a great season. Yeah. yeah, they, yeah I, I'll guarantee you this, uh, Tony. They'll have, uh, with Kirk and uh, Greg Davis and Phil Parker, you know, games like these come down to coaching and scheme, schematics, and, and Iowa will have a really good game plan on Saturday. I, I just look for a great football game. I don't think this is going to be a runaway either way. I mean, you can never predict turnovers. Right. But uh, the, these programs, I mean, you know, all you got to do is go back to Barry Alvarez, Kirk Ferentz, uh, where they come from. They came from the Hayden Fry tree. These programs are built the same way. Run the football and then take your chances when you need to passing the football uh, we'll see what happens, but it should be a great atmosphere up at Camp Randall. Thanks for all your help and uh, 93.1's affiliation, and KWPC on, on the AM side, AM uh, 860. We, we couldn't do it without 45 great affiliates. You guys are right there. Thanks much. Well, you're so welcome. Pre-game at 9, kickoff at 11. Tell Eddie I said hi, and we'll listen to you Saturday, Gary Dolphin. Well, do, Tony. Thanks. Have a great day, buddy. Take care. Bye-bye.